Hi, and welcome to the Code Orange design process series, where we break down our design process for each subsystem of a robot. In this video, we'll, we will be talking about the intake. But as usual, the first thing we did was create a wish preferred demand list. First place we looked at was the ground. Obviously, the ground was a demand because without being able to intake from the ground, the robot would not be able to play. Other places we looked at included the hab zone, being able to intake two balls at once, and being able to intake from the human player station. We decided that the hab zone would be a demand because being able to intake efficiently from the hab zone would save us valuable time during our autonomous period. We also decided that being able to intake two balls at once is also a demand because it would be necessary if we were to get five balls at once using this path during our autonomous period. The human player station was also a discussion that we had. We realized that because there were two heights to the human player station, anytime the robot came, we could simply intake from the bottom since that was already a demand. Therefore, the top was not absolutely necessary to be able to play and we decided that the human player station at least the top section would be a prefer. The next prototype is the mechanum intake. It consisted of two rollers and mechanum wheels that would slide the ball to the right, where it would be taken in by the two larger green grippy wheels. Originally, we believed that our intake would have to serialize the balls, so this was our front running design because of its consistency and reliability. However, once we realized that the hopper would serialize the balls, the design became much slower and a lot more complex than some of the other prototypes we had tested, which was unnecessary and led to our ultimate decision not to use it. This was the first time we separated the serialization of the balls into two different mechanisms. The intake used two rollers, but the bottom roller was a bit too low. Since we hadn't designed our hopper yet, the combined intake prototype failed to effectively serialize balls without jamming, although it was good for intaking balls. The original prototype of this design had three rollers. However, we decided it was too complex to design intake with three. So we began prototyping ways of using only two, but we could not find a viable arrangement where the ball can suddenly got from going to the intake and to the second roller. Instead, it would either be unable to pick up the ball's well or unable to get the ball into the second roller, getting stuck on the top first roller at the corner of the bumper. When we started using brushes in our hopper, we decided to try it on our intake as well. This turned out to solve our problem since they simultaneously had a small inner radius of that would compress the ball, but also had a large outer radius of the brushes that would push the ball to the second roller. We will later take off the brush by deciding to slant our intake so the bottom roller reached lower, which eliminated the need for brushes. Now we need to discuss how the intake will be attached to the robot. The two ideas we had were having a pneumatic slide or an offset virtual forebar. The forebar would stow completely vertically, unlike what the picture shows. We ended up choosing the pneumatic slide because it's a lot simpler, lighter, and does not require the use of an extra motor. Now that we had our design decided, it was time to begin manufacturing the robot. This design incorporated a number of unique designs, including 3D printed parts and brushes riveted onto box tubing, all put together for our unique final product. Our final prototype successfully transferred balls to the serializer, and it was a full robot width over the bumper intake, but it did have problems fitting within the robot's borders. We also noticed that balls would jam under the 775 Pro, which we addressed in later iterations. And while initially we had one set of four inch brushes at the front, that ended up not being the most effective way to gather balls. We also had three fourth inch bore, 12 inch stroke pneumatics to extend and stow the intake and to also prevent stray balls from entering or exiting the robot. However, we did feel that we could further improve this by adding guiding panels in future versions. Our next iteration was just a slight build on the previous one. We took off the brushes 
because we realized that it actually operated a little bit faster without them. And we also flipped the side of the motor so that it wouldn't get jammed. Our original intake design had trouble consistently in taking from the human player station because the gap was too large. About half the time, the ball would bounce to the wrong side of our top roller instead of into our hopper. So we added a carbo funnel to guide the balls from the loading station directly into our hopper. This will be officially added in Polycarb for the next iteration. This intake was our most recent iteration. In this iteration, we redid the geometry, added polycarb panels on the sides and front, and added an incline to the intake. The inspiration for the polycarb side panels came from the cardboard, which worked really well when we used it on the previous version. The incline was added to the intake, so the lower roller could be positioned below the top of the bumper. This was favorable because before, there was not enough compression to intake the balls quickly while also driving, so we ended up running over the balls. With the incline, the bottom roller had more grip on the ball, so it could intake faster than we drove. CAD was very important for the making of the intake because intakes are very reliant on the exact positioning of the rollers relative to the bumpers. Each design started out as a sketch like this. After the exact positioning is decided, the catter makes sure the intake will fit within the robot parameters and does not collide with other mechanisms. This includes staying within the maximum extent range and the width of the robot. After this, the catter designs how the intake will actuate and mount onto the robot. After all these major details are determined, the design will then be refined to become a functional intake.